Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to my Beautiful Nights channel. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to make these really beautiful beaded hair combs. And I have to tell you that I actually created these about five years ago, maybe even longer. And at the time when I first made them, they were so confusing and frustrating to make. They weren't fun for me, and so I never did a tutorial on them. And I made only two of them at the time. The first one I made, I was not really happy with because... On the side of the hair comb, I just basically kind of wrapped the beads around and the beads weren't staying in place. They were flipping to the other side of the comb and the um, bands here on the top, I had less of them than I have here in the new improved one and it just wasn't very strong. And then I used an elastic cord, and I'll tell you about the brand. I was not happy with it. It didn't last long at all. And I have a new cord now that is amazing quality. I'll go over that with you guys and the materials. But um, I ended up just changing my design of the comb. And now it is so much easier to make. It's enjoyable, and it's much better quality, and it's going to be a longer-lasting piece because I'm using much better quality elastic. So here is my new and improved design, and I wish that I had the old one to show you what it looked like. But um, this one here is so much better. It's really sparkly. It's so gorgeous. And there's actually three different stages where you can stop at on this hair comb to get three different looks. So stage one would be right after I do the four millimeter bi cones. It's pretty just like that. Okay, and right now this is actually in stage two. So I went and I embellished the top with seed beads and rondelles. Again, this is stage two. And stage three would be to make two of these and connect them together and make it like this with the webbing in the middle. So here is what it looks like in the pink and pearly silver. And I haven't finished this one yet because I'm thinking I might need to finish this one in the video so I don't want to stretch it too far because I haven't knotted it. But um, uh, this one here is for my friend Lisa and I know you're watching. I hope you're going to love this. It's so pretty. It's really princess-like to me with the colors. It's really nice. And this is the colors that she asked me to make it in. So... I'm going to show you guys how to make this. I'm going to go over the list of materials. I'm going to tell you everything you will need. And I'll also give you links for everything down there. So if you buy the same exact combs I'm using, you shouldn't have any problems. And also if you use the same cord. So make sure that you have everything you need to make this. And um, let's get started. Here is the list of materials you will need to make a beaded hair comb. You will need scunsy hair combs. Now I have tried different kinds of combs. I've tried the metal ones, I've tried other brands, and so far this, this brand here, the scunsy, is the best that I have found. I love the quality, I love how it's made. Now I think I bought these at Walmart. There's a 12 pack of them. They come in six different colors. If you can't find yours at Walmart, you can order them on Amazon. And they're very cheap and affordable and there's free shipping. So I'll put a link for these down there in the description bar. And do make sure that you use the same combs I use because if you use another kind, if it's not the same as mine, if it's whiter, you're going to have a hard time with the bands on the top of your hair comb and it's going to be so confusing. You're also going to need bead stringing wire. You will need to cut two pieces and each piece will be four foot long, one for each comb, and the size I'm using is .010. Now if you don't have this and you can't get your hands on it, I bought mine on Amazon, you can use 10 pound monofilament, but um, with that, you'll have to tie knots. This one here, I'm not tying knots. I'm crimping it. So when you're tying knots, you have to pass through beads and you're clogging up the holes. So I really found that it's best to use this size bead string wire for this project. You're also going to need elastic cord. Now when I first made these, I used Stretch Magic and I hate that stuff. It is crap. It stretches out really fast and I've had a spool of it in storage for a while and I wasn't really using it and when I went to go use it, it was like dry rot and I'm like, what in the world? I never got a chance to use this. So this stuff here I've actually had in my stash for six years and it is in perfect condition. I do keep it stored in a clear bag so I don't know if that's helped it, but it's really strong, good quality elastic. I also got this from Amazon. I will put a link for you down there in the description bar in case you want the same stuff because it's really good stuff, okay? Now the size I am using is .07, so it's not the smallest, it's not the .5, and it's not the point, or is it, 
one point one millimeter I'm using the size like that's in the middle and this I have found to be the best now on the first combs I did I used the smaller 0.5 and it was just not strong enough so I do recommend to get the 0.7 millimeter you're also going to need bicones. I'm using 40 of them in each comb, so actually you need 80 bicones. And I am using bicones from BB Craft. Now here's the thing. This is the box I'm using. I've used these in several of my videos already. Now I have found that these bicones from BB Craft have large holes. They're kind of big. And the um holes on them are rounded so they're not cutting my cord. Now some of them do have sharp holes but what I just did is I went through them and I picked out the ones with the rounded holes. So I found these to be really just perfect for this project because they have big holes. So I will put a link for these bicones. There's a really nice color selection here down in the description bar and I also will have a coupon for BB Crafts in case you make an order through them you can save money. And you're also going to need rondelles. I'm using three millimeter rondelles for embellishing the top. And I'm using 13 on each comb, so you will need 26 of these in total. And I just used these in one of my recent videos. I will put a link for these down there also in the description. And you're also going to need seed beads. Now, I prefer to use junky seed beads for this project because um, the poor quality seed beads have larger holes than the Miyuki or Czech. So here you, you can see these are not good quality, which is just perfect for this project. And I'm sure everybody has beads like this. Now, if you don't have poor quality sea beads, I would say if you do go with a name brand, you're probably going to want to go with Toho because they're more similar to these seed beads. They have big holes. And you can use a 10 -o or 11 -o. It depends on your hole size of your bead. You're also going to need bugle beads. And I prefer to use the longest bugle beads that I can get for this because it makes it faster. You're not going to need a certain size. You can use any size bugle bead you want. You're basically just stringing them so you don't have to use a certain size. You're also going to need crimp tubes. Now I found that it's best to have a number one crimp tube for doing the crimping on this part here but for the elastic part I like to use a number two crimp tube. So you'll need two different sizes and you're also going to need tweezers. These are very helpful. I use these all the time. And chain nose pliers for the crimping. And I also use these for getting through tricky places. This is the list of materials. I know this sounds like a lot. I'll have everything down there for you guys and also links to everything I got so you can make the same hair combs that I have here. So let's get started. I went ahead and I cut four feet of my bead stringing wire and I'm going to start by taking the wire and passing it through this gap right here on the comb. Okay. And then I'm going to pick up a bead a bicone and crisscross through the bicone. Just like that. Put the ends together, make sure they are even and slide this bead down to the very center of my bead stringing wire. Okay, so here's the center. You can see how it's wrapping around like that. Now what I'm going to do is pick up a bead on each side. And then I'm going to pick up another bead and crisscross through that. Bring it down. Pull it tight. I'm going to lay this down on my comb. Pulling this tight, I'm going to hold it like this. And I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to pass it through the next gap in my comb. Just like that. Okay, be careful that this doesn't uh, kink on you because if it kinks, then it becomes weak. Okay, now I'm back here. So I'm going to keep holding it like this taking my wire, I'm coming around and I'm going to go back through this bead. Okay, so basically oops, sorry I forgot a frame there. I'm just wrapping the wire around the comb. Okay, just like that. Now make sure you pull this really tight. You don't want it to be loose. And then I'm going to continue doing this 
again I'm going to pick up a bead on each side pick up another one and crisscross through that bring it down okay I'm going to take this wire here go through the next gap so sometimes you might have to look at the back so this is the next gap I have to go through okay so I'll flip this back over pull this tight through my gap there on my comb now you don't want to go in between here you want to go inside the gap because it's more secure okay now pull this tight take my wire it's good also to hold this in between your fingers so it doesn't loosen up take the wire come around and go back through that bead pull it through okay pull it tight and there we go we have two done so far so I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna do this all the way to the end a bead on each wire pick up another one and cross through that now you do want to make sure that your wires stay the same length as you go all the way down this because if it gets short on one side then it's going to be hard to finish a piece you have to take it apart redo it so I've realized that as long as I keep putting my this wire here that's on the inside as long as I put it down through here it actually ends up being the same but if you want you can check your wire after each weave that you do to make sure that it's staying the same length okay so I'm gonna pass through this bead here pull it tight and I'm gonna go ahead and check and make sure that they are the same length okay and now this one here is longer which is the outside one and I believe that once I do the next one, it will be the same length. So let's see. A bead on each side. Pick up another bead, a third one, and cross through it. Bring it down. Hold it like this. Take the wire, go in between the next hole there in the comb and I'll flip it over again so you can see what it looks like on the back so see how my wire is just in between these teeth here okay pull it tight come around and go back through this bead okay now I'm going to check my wires again and see if they match and they sort of kind of are close so I'm just gonna keep going doing this weave it's pretty simple until I get all the way down here and when I do that's when we're going to embellish the top so I'm just gonna keep going Again, pull this tight, take the wire, go down the next gap, and if you need to, you can look at the back to make sure you're going down in the right place. And then I'm going to go back through this bead here, and pull this tight. All right, so I'm now on the last spot right here. So I have one gap left. 
picking up my beads just like I have been holding it tight I'm gonna take my wire go through the last gap don't let it kink okay and then I'm gonna come back through And there we go. Okay, now this one here is looking close to the edge. I do need to slide this down. When I put the top embellishment on, it will stop that from trying to go over the edge. So this is what I have so far. And like I said, this is stage one. You can stop right here. Um, I would go back through this bead, that bead, and through that one. And then I would meet on the back side and I would crimp it off. If you want, you could stop right here. It's very pretty. So now I'm going to show you how to embellish the top. So even though I am using junky seed beads, I did pick through them and make sure that they were somewhat uniform to each other because I don't want them to be like one that's really big on one side and then one that's like thin, flat shaped on the other because it will look terrible. So I did try to get them to look sort of uniform. But the main reason why I'm using the poor quality seed beads is because they have big holes and I need that for my elastic to go through. So I'm picking up a seed bead on each side, sliding it down, and then I'm going to pick up my three millimeter rondelle and I'm going to crisscross through this bead and slide this down. Pull it very tight. And then I'm going to pick up a seed bead on each side and slide that down. And I'm going to come up to the camera so you could see what I've done. Okay, now I'm going to take my bead stringing wire and I'm going to pass through this bead here. Now sometimes I might have a bead in the way so I just use my fingernails to push it over so I can pass through. Okay, coming through that bicone. I'm going to pull my wire through like this and then I'm going to swap to the other side and by the way I do go like this because sometimes they're not lined up and doing that helps them line up okay now I'm going to take this wire and go through this side and then I'm going to pull both of my wires tight and push this down so that the beads fall into place. So now I have this, it's my first one, and this is what it's going to look like. Okay, I'm gonna keep going, picking up one seed bead on each side and then crossing through the rondelle, and again, one seed bead on each side. And then crossing through the bicone. There's my rondelle. Bring that down, pull it tight, and a C bead again on each side. Slide that down. I'll come in close again so you can see. So I'm right here. I have to pass through this bicone. Pull that through. Swap to the other side and pass to the same bicone but in the opposite direction. Okay. And pull both wire, wires tight. Just like that. And I'm going to keep going, repeating the same steps until I get to the end. It's pretty simple. One seed bead on each side. A rondelle cross through that bring it down a seed bead again on each side slide it down coming out of here the spike going down here I'm going to go through the next one. Pull this through. Swap.
swap to my other wire and go through the same bicone but in the opposite direction. Again, pull it tight. And there we go. So I'm going to do this one more time with you guys and then I'm going to let you do it by yourself. So again, one seed bead on each wire. Pick up a rondelle, cross through that bead. Bring it down, pull it tight. A seed bead on each wire again. Slide it down. Coming out right there, I'm going to go into the next bicone, okay, swap my wires to the other one, and pass through. Make sure you pull it tight each time you do this and again I also like to go like this and just press the beads down so they pop into place so I'm gonna keep going repeating this all the way down here and when I get down here I'll show you what to do next so just keep going following the same steps over and over and Okay, so I'm going to do the last one here, and this one will be different because I'm going to be crimping after I do the top one here. I'm actually going to just be using one wire so that I exit out of this bicone, and I come down here instead of on the end. So I'm going to take one of my wires. One might be longer than the other. This one is, but not by much, though. It's a very small amount. And I'm going to pick up a seed bead, my rondelle, and a seed bead. Slide those down. I'm right here, so I'm going to go at an angle and go through my bicone on the end like this, okay? And then I'm going to pick up a seed bead and I'm going to go through just the rondelle, okay? And then I'm going to hold it like this and pull that tight. Now I'm going to pick up one more seed bead. Okay, my wire is coming out of that bicone right there. I need this one to go through the same bicone, but in the opposite direction. So I'm going to pass through there. I might need my pliers to do this. Let's see. Nope, I don't. Okay. So going through that bicone there. I'm now going to pull both wires tight and push this down. I now have this. Okay, so now I'm going to take this wire here and I'm going to go in between this gap, not the first one, but this one, the second one in. Okay, don't want that kink. Wire through, just like this. Now my wires are on the bottom. I'm going to pick up my crimp tube. I'm using the number one crimp tube for this part here. And I'm crisscrossing through it, bringing it down just like this. It's going to be on the back. So I'm going to hold this like this with my hand. Pull this tight with my fingers, okay? Just like that. As tight as I can get it. Then I'm going to come in here with my chain nose pliers and I'm going to flatten this. Now you can't really flatten it like this. You have to flatten it like this because you can't get in from the other angle. Okay. So I'm going to go over a few times and make sure that it is completely squished down. Go in there from different angles. Now this crimp is sticking up. There's nothing we can do about it, but you're not going to feel it on your head. That's the thing. It's, it's going to be fine. Okay, now what I like to do is I like to, if we can see this, I like to take my wires 
and weave under this wire here. Okay. Because it kind of hides oops, my crimp some. It kind of makes my crimp lay down is what I'm trying to say. But I gotta fidget with it in order to get it to do it. So I'm gonna take my under other wire, go under there, grab it. Okay. Now you can flatten this and slide the crimp underneath, but it's a little tricky to do. But I've done it. It's gonna be hard for me to show it on camera, but it's just something I like to do. Okay, but it does help make the crimp lay down some, okay? So I'm not going to worry about sliding un under. It's going to be just fine. I'm going to go ahead and trim my wires off. Careful not to cut the important wires. Okay. And there we go. This one's all done. So now you have to have two of these made in order to go on to the webbing part. But I gotta tell you, I'm going to leave this video here. I'm gonna do this as a two-part video. It'll be easier for me, and I think it will be better for you guys as well. So I'm going to stop here and look out for part two. I will be uploading it in a couple of days. This is it for part one. To learn how to do the beaded strands on the top of the hair comb, please watch part two. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like this video, leave me a comment, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, and don't forget to click the bell button to get notified when I upload new videos and like me on Facebook. And don't forget to share pictures of the jewelry you've made from my videos on my Facebook page and follow me on Pinterest. Thanks for watching.